The only thing I can tell you is that Sarah had indeed changed. In your opinion, why would your mother remain in hiding over several weeks? You must leave me alone now. I have agreed to everything, even to... But you do realize your mother will have to accept the consequences of her acts. I hope that your search will prove successful and bring Sarah back to us soon. I'll be leaving now because whatever it is you're up to, I do not want to know. Since then, we have become one and the same. We have officially erased the identity of my sister Emma. Emily Hillsborough. The woman with two faces. Everyone seems to be a little unnecessarily heated. Don't forget where you are, please. Don't move. Wait, I don't... So you've come at last. Easy. Let me turn around. Oh my god, Mother, what has happened to you? Who are you? What? But, Mother... Who are you? It's me, Louis, your son. No, you lie. You won't catch me out like that. Louis... Louis isn't here. He obeys his mother. He would never have come here. Mother, I don't know what you've been through, but lower your arm, please. You think I was born yesterday, do you? But it won't work. I'm begging you. One day you will fall. Mother! Why are you here? I received a letter from Lord Mortimer inviting That's me That's enough! You want to corrupt us all, one after the other. But you will never get me. You are evil incarnate! Every word that comes out of your mouth is sharper than a razor blade. I don't wish you any harm. Really, Mother. It's me, Louis. Don't speak to me about him! You will never get him! Mother, stop torturing yourself! It really is me, Louis. How can I convince you? If you really are who you say you are, what was the saying I taught you? You've been telling it to me since I was three years old, Mother. How could I ever forget it? Always keep your mind rational. and open. You knew it. You are smart. You're getting me muddled up. Tell me, rather. Whose place were we at when I told you I was coming here? Mother, I really am your son. You can't trick me. We were in Paris. We were investigating an art dealer. His name?
I just told you, you can't trick me. His name was Von Borchert. My God, everything is lost then. I refuse to believe it's really you, Louis. Otherwise, all this would be for nothing. Mother, I, I don't know what happened to you, but don't worry. Everything is going to be fine. I'm here for you and- No, I ordered you not to come with me. I received a letter and Lord Mortimer informed me of your disappearance. So I took the- No, no, no. It's not true. It's a nightmare. Don't tell me that. Have you spoken to him? Oh, shit. She's completely panicked because I spoke to Mortimer. It seems she's afraid of what he might have said to me about her. Did he speak to you? Don't believe it. I, I thought I'd meet him the moment I arrived, given the situation. But not at all. He didn't even bother to meet me in person. I imagine that Elizabeth was still here. Very well. Rational and open, Louis. Since you arrived on the island, has anything strange happened to you? Depends on what you mean by strange. Personally, I think that you being missing for three days and then me finding you underground, minus a hand, well, that qualifies as strange, don't you think? No, my hand is not important for the moment. If that's the only thing you found that shocks you, then all is well. Now shut up and listen to me. We might still have a chance. Something of utmost importance is going to play out right here. What are you talking about? A conference, Louis. I should think all Mortimer's guests have arrived by now, haven't they? Yes, they have. Since this morning. Perfect. The conference will be able to begin. You will attend this conference, and you must find out what Mortimer is up to. Don't trust him, Louis. Understood? Louis, I made a mistake by coming here. We are in the lion's den. Mortimer, Holm, their guests, watch what happens. Do you think it's normal that the representatives of the most powerful nations are here all on their own without anyone else? On an island in the middle of nowhere in total secrecy? No, not really, but- Louis! They shape the world. They manipulate us. Everything is decided here and now. They create and break states, provoke wars, destitute governments, or decide who will be their leaders. Open your eyes! Nothing is impossible for them. They are capable of reaching everyone, wherever they may be. Through high society banquets, they model the future of us all. And it isn't at all an issue for them. And? What do you propose? It's time to act, my son. You will go to this conference and, from the inside, you'll do everything you can to prevent Mortimer's plan from going ahead smoothly. We can talk later. I'll explain everything. But why? Do as I say, Louis. It's of the utmost importance. Beware of Mortimer. He won't let anything stand in his way. You promised me that after- Yes, after. Go now. Yes, mother, I'm going, I'm going. One more thing, mother. Emily Hillsborough, Emma's sister, came to this island looking for her sister. She probably won't hesitate to take revenge and... It's the signal that the conference is starting, Louis. Don't be concerned about the Duchess. She's the last of our worries.
Monsieur de Richet, you're the only one missing at the conference. Please join the guests. There's the alchemical symbol of the earth on the lid. Thank you for joining us. We are about to begin our conference. Let me explain what is at stake. Thank you kindly, but what do you expect of me exactly? My mother's the one who's supposed to attend, not me. That is indeed what was initially intended. Unfortunately, she still hasn't been found, and my guests can't stay here indefinitely. The conference must begin, and it would be truly beneficial to the Order to join in the project. Consequently, I would like you to replace her during her absence. What is at stake here is of the utmost importance. It's important that the French Order gets their say. And should you need any advice, don't worry, you are not alone, Louis. Very well. In concrete terms, how do you organize your discussions? A conference is always organized the same way. There are two Masters of Ceremony who determine an important subject. You and Sir Gregory, I presume? Exactly. We shall be the Masters of Ceremony. It was our obligation to each bring to the table several guests in order to debate a subject. Once the debate is closed, a decision will be made by a vote of all the participants. By a unanimous vote. If the project is not agreed on by all, then it will be rejected. And neither of the two Masters of Ceremony have the right to vote. It's up to the guests alone to decide, Louis. In other words, us. Gregory and myself are merely the go-betweens. Finally, if the project is validated, each guest goes home and starts working to make it happen. It can take years. Louis, let me keep you a moment. I would like to let you in on a secret before we begin, because I'm going to need your assistance. You see, the project I'm going to present concerns the territory of Louisiana in North America. It's currently Spanish territory, and I'm going to make the proposition to the Assembly for it to become French. My idea is to increase the territory of the United States. The first stone of this vast project consists of getting Spain to cede Louisiana to France. Once it becomes French, France will hand it over to the United States, which will then allow them to double the size of their territory. 
And that's where you come in. France and the United States, hand in hand. Two democracies illuminating the world. The concept of royalty is from bygone times. It is time to lead the way to democracy. Take a look at them. Apart from President Washington, they all belong to monarchies. Do you really think they won't resist? Of course they'll fight. Fearful as they are of losing their precious privileges. But the world needs visionaries. Like you. Like your mother. It's a pity Sarah isn't here to see it. She only knew about a tiny part of the project. I hope I can count on you, Louis. It's time to start now. I must ask you to keep it to yourself for the time being. Take a seat. Follow the discussions. We'll have an opportunity to catch up later, and you'll be able to let me know your thoughts. Blast it, Mother. You didn't know about everything. This project is commendable. Why tell me to beware? Could you have gotten it wrong? I can tell you that someone is an idiot. My friends, I propose we get started. First of all, I would like to thank you for taking the time to come. The honor is ours, my lord. As per our custom, here we are all together to discuss the face of tomorrow's world. Even though there may be certain tensions between our nations, I must ask you to keep an open mind. As Sarah de Richet is unable to be among us, please welcome Louis de Richet, who will represent the Golden Order and will vote on its behalf when the time comes. Welcome among us, Louis. Welcome, Monsieur. I hope he'll be more effective than his mother regarding the protection of the King of France. The Order has proved particularly inefficient. Come, Manuel, you're not going to spoil our visit. The Order's mission was not to protect King Louis XVI, as far as I am aware. We are talking about a King of Divine Blood, for goodness sake. It seemed obvious to me he needed protecting. If the Golden Order wants to pride itself on being an influential organization, it should have kept him alive. Perhaps we may begin, Lord Mortimer. Certainly. I have a dream that our nations will continue to support each other, more now than ever before. A dream that, for the sake of common good, we will do what it takes to ensure stability in the modern world. I have a dream that we shall lead by example and ensure that the American territory may remain in peace. Thank you for the thought, Lord Mortimer, but I don't see where you're leading. I'm coming to it, Mr. President. I need not remind you that North America is currently divided between the United States on the East Coast and Spain, which occupies the remaining two-thirds of the continent. Well, I propose that Spain cede the center of the continent to France, namely all of Louisiana. Louisiana? But... Well, it is not for sale. Lord Mortimer, I sincerely hope I have not come all this way just to hear you ramble on about what Spain should and should not do. When we went to all the trouble of gaining the territory a few years ago, it was not just to lose it today. Have I made myself clear? What did I tell you, William? You speak of union, and yet here you are about to tear us apart. Duke Manuel, I perfectly understand you. But rest assured, you will soon adore my proposition. You shall see. Well, since you give me the choice, my good fellow, allow me to doubt it. However, I am impatient to hear what Spain could possibly gain from the sale of Louisiana. I never spoke of a sale, my good fellow. What? I, I do not understand. There is one more territory left to conquer, if I'm not mistaken, in the Northwest. It is, of course, occupied by your notorious Indians, but... We shall soon be rid of the savages, so that is not the question. Duke Manuel, I believe that Spain should cede Louisiana to France 
free of charge. This is utterly grotesque, Lord Mortimer. What a strange example you set for your young protege. Isn't that so, Monsieur de Richet? Do you understand anything of this proposition? If I were you, Senor Godoy, I would think twice before stirring up a scandal. I beg your pardon? Given the size of your colonies, you won't be able to keep them for long. A number of countries are eyeing them as we speak. The United States would have no trouble taking them. For all intents and purposes, you have no army in place. By wanting to keep everything, you risk losing it all, especially your colonies in South America, which are far more valuable to you. That is indeed the danger, Duke Manuel. If it comes to war over Louisiana, you will lose, and probably a good deal more than you now imagine. Young man, you are indeed a dark horse, aren't you? I must say, William, I find your project mostly disfavors me. I thought you were my friend. And I am, Mr. President. That is why I'm doing everything in my power to calm your expansionist fervor. France, in Louisiana, should persuade you not to attempt anything to take the territory by force. Louisiana is a vast wetland where you would needlessly lose most of your troops. It would weaken you and offer certain nations the perfect opportunity to take back your famous United States. I am protecting you from yourself, George. Trust me. I understand. But with friends like you, sir, I certainly don't need any more enemies. I hope you know what you're doing. Not to put too fine a point on it, Lord Mortimer, uh, but I doubt the Holy See would be in favor of Catholic Louisiana being handed over to secular revolutionaries and king killers. I should think Monsieur de Richet has an opinion on this subject, does he not? Your eminence, have no fear over that. I am sure France will do everything in its power to protect the Christians of Louisiana. My young friend, how can you come out with such a remark after the discussion we had on the evening of your arrival? If France was so respectful of worship, it would not be bleeding priests as it is doing at this very moment in time. <sighs> Don't be naive. This is politics. The Holy See must be concerned at seeing such a large territory falling into the hands of the French. Mi auguro che insegnerete l'educazione a questo giovanotto presuntuoso, Sir Gregory. I hope that you will teach this pretentious young man some manners, Sir Gregory. It looks like I won't be just making friends here. In any case, my lord, I doubt the English crown will agree. Ich will sicher ein, wenn Emily nie preußen wird diese Vereinbarung akzeptieren. I assure you, Emily, the Prussian will never accept this agreement. Volner looks like he's set on ruining Mortimer's plan. Duchess, I am persuaded that we shall find a common ground. That's enough, William. These are great times. We don't care about the fate of Louisiana. That worthless expanse of putrid swamps interests no one but yourself. Speak for yourself, my friend. Hold on there, Mr. Royal Gigolo. Lower the volume and let Sir Gregory finish. Home, Godoy, and now Volner? Mortimer's adversaries are ready to tear each other to pieces, and he takes a malicious pleasure in watching it happen. How dare Gentlemen, you! Gentlemen, let us try to remain calm. There you are, William. See where your projects have taken us, as per usual. Chaos! 
That's enough. I'm tired. We shall continue this discussion tomorrow, but please be aware that your project will never be ratified. Those who are opposed to this project, follow me. Are you coming with us, Monsieur de Richer? Come, Gregory. I think Louis would rather stay. Wouldn't you, Louis? At the risk of displeasing you, my lord, I'd rather follow Sir Gregory. I don't think this is a place for the Order. Louis? No, let him go, Mr. President. Everyone is free to choose. How can he be so blind? If he keeps this up, he'll lead our countries to their destruction. Don't worry, we shall counter him, Sir Gregory. We have to act immediately. Calm down, Gregory. Only have to vote against his project, and that's it. They haven't got a chance. Just one vote will suffice. True. There is no chance of a unanimous vote. And he knows it. He must be preparing something else. What is he plotting? I know about his plan. What did you just say, Louis? His aim is for the United States to take the whole of the North American continent. But that is impossible! A democratic superpower. I don't understand. That has nothing to do with the coming vote. You will ask for France to take over Louisiana, and then hand it over to the United States, and so double the size of their territory. Once that's done, he will just need to push a bit more, and you will lose North America, Duke Manuel. God's blood! Has he gone mad? No, Johan. He has always been mad. <sighs> Louis, I would like to thank you for what you've just revealed. If not for you, I don't know if we'd have been capable of deciphering his plans quickly enough to be able to counter him. What are we going to do now that we know about it? Destroy him. No! We'll beat him at his own game, my friends. His plan begins with Louisiana, which is still yours, Duke Manuel. He will begin with you. Expect to receive an envoy, French most probably. He will try to convince you by every possible means. Whatever he says, whatever he promises, you have just one response. It's war. If war is what you want, war is what you'll get. And on your own territory, in your homes. Enough games. Spain will join the coalition against France and declare war. You too, Duchess Hillsborough. You will speak to the Queen so that Great Britain commits to going to war with France. What do you expect from the Papal States, Sir Gregory? What do you think? That they hold a mass? They will go to war, of course. What is it that you didn't understand in what I just told you? We all declare war on France. Militarily, politically, and financially. And me, Sir Gregory? How can I help? Louis, you have won my trust. The Order will have to act in France, but even before that, I'm going to need you. Right here and right now. Leave me now. I have to prepare for tomorrow. Let's meet early tomorrow morning for the next phase of the conference, which promises to be most exciting. Uh, Louis? I'd like to see you a moment, please. Thank you for signing with me today. I won't forget it. I'm going to need you. Help me counter Mortimer on his own ground. Right here. I'm sure he'll try and win some of you over. He needs our votes. Now, you leave that to me. In the meantime, I must ask you to go and see President Washington and persuade him to trust me and join us. I'll do my best. You should go right away. There's no time to lose. William already has a head start on us. Very well. I'll go right away. I 
no space left. I'll retrieve it later. No space left. I'll retrieve it later. Whose name tag's fallen off, and his door's ajar. four circles. Dear Monsieur Peru, I'm writing to thank you for the funds you sent. These funds will be crucial for the renovation of the western wing of the orphanage. The children you sent are doing marvelously well, and little Pierre will soon be walking. Some of them still sometimes suffer nightmares about their parents on the scaffold, but I expect they will cease in due course. Should you decide to send us more, please note that another 20 beds will soon be ready. The children and myself will never thank you enough. Long live the Republic. Long live France. Sister, Marie Allen. I have no space left. I'll retrieve it later. I have no space left. I'll retrieve it later.
Monsieur Napoleon Bonaparte. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. Duke Manuel Godoy. Mary Louise of Parma. <laughs> How ironic having a painting of the Queen of Spain in one's room, my Lord Duke. Hey, it looks like someone slipped something in the back here. It's a letter. Let's see what it says. It reeks of perfume, and it's written in Spanish. Godoy, you really are a little devil. Don Quixote. Talking without thinking is like shooting without taking aim. Hmm. Yeah, Prometheus. Punished for stealing fire from the gods and giving it to man. The Kiss of Judas, painted by Caravaggio. This is how Judas pointed out Christ to the Roman soldiers. Can you imagine a worse betrayal? That's me. Monseigneur, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi.
Brutus and his companions taking an oath to kill Caesar. Prometheus, punished for stealing fire from the gods and giving it to man. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. Carmelite water. They say that if you drink this, it gives you a real boost. My dearest son, I'm writing to implore you to act quickly. The situation is rapidly worsening here. Powali continues to steer our motherland, Corsica, toward open warfare between France and England. His men are everywhere. We are obliged to go into hiding and are unable to remain in the same place for more than two days. I wouldn't be surprised if they targeted us soon. Make haste, my son. You hold our destiny in your hands. Your loving mother, Maria Letizia Bonaparte. It's a beautiful weapon. Levy Damask Blade. It's marked with the initials of the manufacturer in Versailles. The Battle of Alexander at Issus, or... How Alexander the Great triumphed over King Darius. Yet at the Beaucaire dinner. It hasn't been signed yet, but there's a letter with it. So... Bonaparte is going to publish a book that he didn't write. That crafty little rascal. President George Washington.
locked. The president's personal reserve of laudanum, and judging by the quantity, he can't go without it. Ah, there's also a letter. What are you doing in my room? <sighs> Mr. President, I won't beat around the bush. I came to persuade you not to follow Lord Mortimer on this one. I appreciate your forthrightness, Louis. That will save us some time. Well, since you're here, can I get you something to drink? No, no thank you, Mr. President. As you wish. Well, Louis, it's getting late and this is not my first conference, so let's get straight to the point. You are here to motivate me to change sides. I have decided not to follow Mortimer. I noticed. Every man must make his own choice, what can we say? That's the political game. And you did not commit to supporting Mortimer, so there's nothing for you to feel bad about. So what can I do for you? Mr. President, I don't believe it is necessary for me to motivate you at all. It's simply in your best interest. I was there at the conference, remember? Now, to put it bluntly, Mortimer announced a project that offers absolutely no interest for you. You said so yourself. My young friend, I must admit that Lord Mortimer did somewhat surprise me earlier. Anyway, you haven't really said what you wanted to say. Tell me, Louis. What have you come here to sell me? You should join home. And why would I do that?
owe it to my mother. She helped you in your early days. She supported you when you needed it. I'm certain she'd be against this plan. Do you know who introduced me to Sarah all those years ago? Lord Mortimer. Do you know who advised Sarah to start up a chapter of the Golden Order with me in the United States? Lord Mortimer? You see my point, then? I have a lot of respect for your mother, Louis, but my allegiance is to Lord Mortimer. Tell me what Sir Gregory has to offer that I don't already have with Lord Mortimer. Mr. President, it seems that Lord Mortimer would rather see Louisiana become French and not American. Sir Gregory proposes that Louisiana go to you. What? You would be prepared to hand it over to me? It is certainly a possibility. But for that, you must not side with Mortimer at the conference. I see. Louis, you convinced me. I congratulate you for your performance, because I didn't think it could happen. I merely expose the facts to you. Don't spoil everything with your false modesty now. You really were very good, and that's that. In any case, I shall follow you on this one. This may well arouse Lord Mortimer's wrath, but I must put the United States before anything else. Have we finished, Louis? Absolutely, Mr. President. I shan't keep you any longer. Allow me to take my leave. Good night, Louis. Get some rest. Tomorrow will be a very big day. Well, that's one thing out of the way. The only thing left to do is wait for the conference to resume tomorrow morning. Monseigneur, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. Good evening, Monsieur le Francais. Duchess, you're here. What a charming surprise. I'm beginning to think you can't be without me. You have managed to penetrate my armor, sir. Am I disturbing you, perhaps? That's not what I said. Ah, oh, by the way, congratulations on choosing Sir Gregory this evening. You surprised me. I wasn't expecting it. Why, Emily, can't you read me like an open book? Not as well as you read me, it would seem. I'll teach you if you'd like. There's nothing I'd like more. Tell me, are these visits to Mortimer's always so intense? Yes and no. My sister doesn't normally disappear like she has. Any news of your mother? I've seen her, Emily. What? When was that? A little earlier, just before the conference. She was hiding. And did you manage to speak to her? She's not the same. I, I don't know what's been happening to her, but she's changed. I found her in a deplorable state with, with one of her hands cut off. I mean, she was saying crazy things, bordering on delirium. What? Did you say one of her hands was cut off? What happened to her? I, I don't know. She, she wouldn't say. And did she tell you why she... why... Why she shot Emma? 
No. Unfortunately, we were unable to broach the subject. She seemed terribly upset, Emily. There's something strange going on here. She was fearful of something or someone. Excuse me, Louis, but until we see proof of the contrary, she's the one who is sowing death everywhere she goes. We are the ones who ought to be fearful. I know. I know. No, I apologize for that remark. Who do you think she's hiding from? Mortimer? I don't know. Maybe. Louis, I don't want to pile it on, but I would understand her feelings there. You ought to be wary of Mortimer. He's a manipulator, a liar, a coward who doesn't assume his responsibilities at all. What exactly happened between you two, Emily? You're so radically against him. Can we change subject, please? I didn't come here to go through all that again. Of course, it's late. You're right. Come, Louis. My friends, do not worry. I assure you that Lord Mortimer's plan will never see the light of day. I shall deal with informing our allies, but for the time being, I need you to make a stand. What do you think about Monsieur de Richet? I don't know yet. I feel there's great potential in him. He looks like he can be trusted. Why isn't he with us? He was opposed to Mortimer. I'll wait and see. I'm still not sure of his position. And uh, Duchess Hillsborough. Oh, why isn't she here? She's busy. Don't worry about her. Oh, isn't it time to replace her? Not so fast, sir. She is an important figure. You ought to have a little more faith in her. What are we going to do about Washington? He will be a hard nut to crack. On our chessboard, he is Mortimer's king. Don't worry. Mr. President only wants one thing. To keep his dear America united. He won't jeopardize everything he has achieved on a whim. He has been serving Mortimer for quite some time. It won't be easy to uh, bring him around. I have asked Monsieur de Richet to approach him. Let us have faith in him. I sense that Mr. Peru is about to surprise us too. Yet he is Mortimer's strong arm in France. He knows his time has come, and I believe he is intelligent enough to realize it means he is no longer any use to Mortimer. Do you feel all right, Mr. Godoy? You haven't said a word. Please, excuse me, gentlemen. I feel tired. Oh, I see. I think it is high time you left us then. Now! Emily? Emily? Are you there? Sir, the conference is about to begin. You are expected in the conference room. Tell them I'm coming. Thank you. Come on, Louis. The game is back on. My friends, the conference is about to begin. And please excuse me if I troubled you last night with my project. I understand that you might well have a few questions to ask. As you know, the final vote will be cast in a few days. This morning's aim is to answer your questions and check the temperature of your respective positions so that we may reach a greater understanding. As always, Lord Mortimer. Uh, we parted in perfect disagreement, my lord. Where would you like us to take it from? Come, sir. Please let William believe he still has a chance of winning us over. Otherwise, his imprecations will lack panache. 
and we shall be bored stiff. Oh, let me reassure you. I am convinced that a good night's sleep has brought sound advice, and that this morning will be even more interesting. Therefore, I would like to go around the table in order to hear everyone's first impressions. Well, I am still firmly against it. Even though my choice won't count. Against. 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 And you, Duke Manuel? Against, of course. Well, as for me, I am for Lord Mortimer's project. Despite Duchesse Hillsborough's overwhelmingly convincing nocturnal attentions. What? So Emily was playing at trying to win over guests last night? It was nothing more than a friendly little chat, of course. How could it be otherwise? And by the way, remember me to your husband when you see him. And you, President Washington, what is your position? Well, you see, Monsieur Bonaparte, I would rather you'd have forgotten me for a minute. William, I am sorry, but I cannot follow you this time. George? What? I am against William. Please excuse me. I cannot commit the United States to such an enterprise. It's just too risky. Well, that leaves just yourself and Monsieur Peru, Louis. You're all making me sick. Look at yourselves. What? You are pathetic! Have you been drinking or what? There you are, quibbling away. My Lord do this, and Madame do just that. You know very well that we're nothing but puppets on a damn string. Jacques, Camille! Let's end the charade. It's over! Jacques. My Lord, thank you for everything you've done for me over the years. But it didn't come for free. And now I see the price is too high to pay. I'll stop. Come, Jack, we'll talk it over. No, I'm finished. I want my freedom back, my lord. I shall no longer work for you. Wait! Derice, you just can't help it, can you? Stop trying to play the hero, man! Monsieur, I know I don't really know you, but you seem like a decent person. I have done so many horrible things! You blame yourself, I can see that. Everything's not lost. I don't want to do bad things anymore. You can take control of yourself again. You can fix whatever it is you've done. Do you really believe that? Of course, Jacques. You'll have all the time you need. Look. You've done as much as you can. You have nothing to fear. Your daughter is safe. Shut up! I don't understand. I spoke to him only recently. Monsieur Perrault has lost his mind. It's obvious. Yet another way for the French to make a spectacle of themselves. Well, once again it has worked. My friends, let us settle down, please. 
We are all in shock, of course. Let us praise Louis's gesture, anyway. You did what you could. Yes, it was very noble of you, Louis. It wasn't your fault. There was nothing else you could have done. I think everyone needs a little rest. Can you stay a moment? Of course. Louis, I wanted to talk to you a moment about what has happened. All this is tragic, but I wanted to thank you for doing what you could. I wasn't able to save him. You couldn't, Louis. You mustn't blame yourself. It is not your fault. I know this has nothing to do with me, my lord, but don't you think you're partly to blame? It won't escape your attention that he incriminated you before he took his own life. I heard what he said, yeah. Monsieur Peru appeared to blame me for his condition. I certainly encouraged him to succeed, but I wasn't aware he couldn't handle the pressures of the situation. Of course, his duties in Paris were very difficult. The choices he had to make were burdensome. But that was the path he had chosen. Should I not have helped him to succeed, perhaps? You heard him yourself. His duties as judge got the better of him. Did you push him into it? I wouldn't say push, but I did encourage him, yes. I thought it was my duty to help him as much as I could, to become the court judge he dreamed of being. I thought he was capable of it. It appears I was mistaken, unfortunately. What a pity he didn't come and speak to me. What a waste. What are your plans now? What do you mean? For the conference. After the disappearances of both Elizabeth Adams and my mother, and now the death of Mr. Perlou, I should imagine that your guests are all packing their bags. This might come as a bit of a shock to you, perhaps because it was so difficult to bring all these figures together, but I am convinced that none of them is preparing to leave. And you endorse that? For God's sake, that's totally immoral. Morality and politics don't go well together, my boy. Like water and oil, they cannot mix. By definition, politics is not immoral as much as it is amoral. It must not take into account any morality that would constitute a hindrance. Otherwise, it could not be free to make tough decisions. Do you realize what you just said? It's a question of duty, Louis. Look, morality evolves over time, and differs depending on the habits and customs of each country. It must not be a criterion. What we are doing here, Louis, will change the very face of the world. I'm not saying it's easy, but it is our duty. The future is in motion, and nothing must stop it. If you say so, allow me to take my leave, please. Of course. You ought to get some rest. Oh, Louis, uh, one more thing, please. What a pity you didn't support me during the conference. I hope I can count on you on the day of the vote. This major project needs men like you, Louis. And you never know, right? Maybe by then, I'll see things differently. Well, uh, thank you for allowing me to believe in that possibility, Louis. From here on, I shall make it my mission to persuade you to change your vote. Be my guest. But I hope your arguments are very, very persuasive, because I'm not the only one who isn't on your side. Oh, rest assured, I am working on it. Very well, then. I'll see you later, my lord.
You know, I'm freezing! Of course, sir. I'll see to it straight away. Good. Proceed. Yes, sir. Monsieur Bonaparte. Sorry, Derichy. I have no time for traitors such as yourself. I beg your pardon? If you are here, it's because Lord Mortimer agreed to include you. And what's the first thing that you do? You betray him by following Sir Gregory and bending over backwards to turn Washington against him. Oh. I'm sorry. I thought I was free to vote as I pleased. I didn't realize I had to vote for Lord Mortimer in order to show my gratitude toward him. Hey, he invited me here to come and look for my missing mother during his high society party. I'm sorry, truly sorry. I don't know all your customs yet. It's just common decency that when invited to a man's castle, you don't go and to pee on his boots. Is it too much to ask? I guess it is. Johann von Wulner. Congratulations, Monsieur de Richet. You made the right decision at the conference. What can I do for you? Do you have any news regarding your search for the Alazif? Ah, good. You are straight to the point this time. I appreciate that. I shall allow myself to reply only because we are now on the same side. But keep it to yourself. My search is over. <laughs> we have it. Congratulations. You, you were quicker than me. Oh, don't blame yourself. You had no chance of getting the better of Sir Gregory. Well, at least I tried. So, tell me, where did you find it? Would you believe that your mother gave it to Emily's twin sister before we arrived on the island? Apparently she asked her to hide it and once she had done so, your mother intended to kill her. But Emma, Emily's sister, survived. So Gregory realized this and hid her in his apartment to tend to her, uh, without anyone knowing. When she came around, Emma rallied to Sir Gregory and told him where the Al Azif was. And uh, <laughs> that was it. That's one good thing uh, done and dusted. <laughs> Is anything wrong? Oh, well, uh, if I were you, Louis, I would be careful. Emma is still alive, and when your mother turns up, I wouldn't be surprised if she considers she has a score to settle with her. You're right. It's quite probable. I think that Sir Gregory will do all he can to calm the situation down, but there's no guaranteeing that she won't find a way of taking her revenge on your mother. However, keep it to yourself. Hmm? Hmm? We never spoke to each other. Thank you for this information, sir. Oh, don't mention it, Louis. It's natural. We are playing on the same side now. <laughs> you can always count on me. On that note, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Oh, not at all, Louis. Come back whenever you want. I'll see you later.
Next time, I'll listen to my mother. Not a day has gone by without something happening to me. What now? Louis, open up, please. Coming, Mr. President, I'm coming. Louis. Ah, oh, there you are at last. Yes, I... I just saw your mother. She was accompanied by Emily, and they both went into the Duchess's room. I tried to join them, but I was refused entry. Louis, this does not bode well. Oh, shit. Emily might want to avenge your sister. I must act quickly. You're right, Mr. President. Thank you. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. I do believe that's Emily's voice. I can't understand what she's saying. I can't understand what she's saying. Sir, but you are unable to access Monsieur Peru's room while we gather his personal effects. Get inside Emily's room through the shit. It's locked. It's as if there are several people inside. Once again, you're the one who's the victim in all this. What are you on about now? I should never have told you what happened to me. That's how it works, and you know it full well. I'm not that naive. I know you inside out. Stop. We'll end up losing everything if you... What can. on earth is... You... Mother? How dare you do this to me? You can talk. After everything I've done for you, you are joking, I hope, right? I gave you my life. That's enough, Emma. Now that Louis is here, you will leave Sarah alone. Cease your revenge immediately. What? What? If you think you're going to... Louis, help me, I beg you. I can no longer reason with her. I am Emily. Quit playing games. I... What? Honestly, don't be ridiculous. No. I am Emily. You are wasting your time. Louis knows very well how to tell us apart. After everything we've been through together. Yes, well... Don't you dare bring him into this. This is between you and me. I ask for nothing more, so stop taking it out on Sarah. I... You pretty little bitch! How dare you! 
Now that I've told you everything, you want to take my place, do you? You are joking, I hope. I'm the one who told you everything that's been going on while you were away. Go on, then. That's what you want, isn't it? You want to kill me? Go on, then. Shoot! After all the trouble I've gone through to find you. Go on. What are you waiting for? Here, Louis, take this. Wait, what's going- An entire life for this. Go on, shoot. Sorry, Louis, I, I can't shoot her. She's my sister. I... That's enough, Emma. Louis, out of the way. She's dangerous. Don't trust her. What are you trying to do? Louis, out of the way. I am not Emma. Come on, Louis, tell her who the real Emily is. Wait, I... That's right, Louis. I'm fed up with this little game. Tell him who the real Emily is. Why do these things always happen to me? Well, Louis, come on, you know how to tell us apart, right? Yes, yes, but I'd like to ask you a few questions to make sure there's no doubt. Rational and open, Louis. Let's see. How can I tell them apart? Wait, I've got an idea. On the night of our arrival... You asked me what had become of me since we last met in London, many years ago. What did I answer? You told me you had become a detective, Louis. You only know that because I told you. You even told me about your exploits with the thieves who tortured their victims. What were they called again? The Chauffeur d'Auger, I think. I was the one who told you that. Liar. I was there. Right. Let's find something else. Ah, yes. Let's speak about my arrival at the manor. On the night of our arrival, we were warming ourselves in front of the fire. Mortimer welcomed us in a certain way. What happened exactly? Well played, Louis. Unfortunately, I'm not the one you should have asked that question to. Mortimer did not welcome us. It was Sir Gregory who welcomed us that night. Mortimer didn't show up until two days later. I know that as well. Very well. Let's try something else. On the first night, we went up to bed, but I wasn't tired. I went for a little stroll. Before going to bed, I, I went for a stroll. Did we speak to each other during that stroll? You must be mistaken. After going up to bed, I went straight to sleep. But she knows all that, Louis. I already told her. I don't think you're going to get away with this deception so easily. I can assure you, you're going to regret pretending to be me once Louis has exposed you. Right. I don't think I'll get very far like this. I'll have to find something better. Oh, I don't think I'll even wait until he's finished. Take it easy now. Are you mad, Louis? Lower your arm. Oh, I better act quickly if I don't want things to get out of hand. Come on, she's putting one over on you. Look at yourself for crying out loud. You were prepared to shoot me down. In the secret room behind the study. Talk to them about what you've been doing. Maybe they haven't spoken about it between each other yet. On the night of the disappearance of Elizabeth Adams. What about it? What do you want to know about that night? In the portrait gallery, we found ourselves in a singular situation. What happened to us? We both went around the manor all night like sleepwalkers, searching. And that's how we found ourselves in Mortimer's private gallery, behind the chimney. That doesn't prove a thing. I told you all that. That's enough! I've had enough of this charade. Louis, there's only one way to tell us apart. There's just one thing I didn't tell her about in detail. Too bad for you, Emma. I didn't want it to come to this, but you leave me no choice. Ask her. 
About you and I. You just lost Emma. I indeed didn't tell you everything about it. Come, Louis. Speak about our intimacy. Very well. Let's talk about us. Last night, when you came to my room, what exactly did you expect from me? Exactly what happened. I was hoping you would share your bed with me. What? Which I did. And it was delicious, sir. What do you mean, it was delicious? You little slut. What did you do? Believe it or not, Louis, out of fear of her jealousy, I didn't tell Emma that we spent last night together. I hate you! That's enough, both of you. Now I know who the real Emily is. It's you, Emily. No, oh, Louis, she is manipulating you. No, Emma, it's her, I know it. Despite all the trouble you've gone to to put one over on me, I know it is her. That's enough now, Emma, you little slut. Don't think you are going to get away with this so easily. You are going to stop your little game right now. Never, I am Duchess Hills. No. Emily? I. I'm the Duchess. But... You don't! I... Dear God, what have I done? See what you've done! See? Louis? Mother! What on earth is... Go away! You must go. Everyone is going to arrive. Louis, what's going on? Duchess? Is everything all right? Come on, Louis! There's nothing more you can do! But I... Leave us. Emily, what's going on? Mother, go to the crypt. I'll meet you there. I'll be waiting for you. Emily. Madam, I am coming in. It was bound to end like this, Louis. Let me stay with her. Please, go. I'll cover you. Corn decorated with a cockade. It must belong to a French soldier. Good God! They're all here. They must have heard the gunshot. Where is Lord Mortimer? Can anyone hear anything through the door? Did you hear that? I was not dreaming, was I? Certainly not, Duke Godoy. What's going on? Someone had the bang coming from the Duchess's room. She isn't answering. Gentlemen, go back to your rooms. Go back to your rooms. I shall find out from Lord Mortimer what this is all about. Thank you.
Louis! At last, there you are. Mother, wait, I... Come, we have to be quick. No, wait, Mother, I... Time is running out, Louis. First, we must... No! That's enough. I won't go a step further unless you explain to me what is going on here. I'm begging you. Talk to me. You must trust me, my son. You are not ready yet. You are the one who should trust me. Tell me what's happening. You would never believe me. I came all the way here for you. Now I've found you. I'm ready, Mother. If only, Louis, I have always taught you to keep your mind open and rational. I know you are going to find this hard to believe, but what I am going to reveal to you is entirely true. Many years ago, I found out that demons really do live among us. I beg your pardon? And that they can influence our thoughts. Mother, listen to yourself. I know you're exhausted, but for crying out loud, listen to what you're saying. Demons? <laughs> what next? An ancient monster with a head like an octopus? What do your demons look like? Have they got horns and a pointed tail? No, these are not creatures with billy goat's legs. Forget your Christian folklore. Imagine them more as parasitic spirits. They possess their hosts and direct them from inside. Parasitic spirits? Yes, they are capable of going from one body to another as they see fit. And two of them are present on this island. Right, so let me guess. I'd put my money on the boogeyman and Father Christmas. Do you really believe that I'm joking here? Many years ago, well before you were born, I crossed paths with one of them. Since then, I've spent my life trying to find it again. When we recovered the Alizif, I was persuaded that Von Burchard was working for this demon in one way or another. But I thought he would hand the book to a middleman during this conference. That's where I made an error, an error that could well turn out to be fatal. The one who Burchard was meant to give the book to was none other than the demon in person, Mortimer. Not to mention that Holm had sent Volner to get it for him. Holm and Mortimer are demons? They both seem to disagree about many things, but I'll admit I never knew exactly why. There are many of them, Louis. Not just those two. Mother, have you any proof to support any of this? Of course, but you do too. You had everything laid out in front of you. Didn't you notice anything? Well, those property deeds across the world, all signed by the same hand, in over several centuries. I am proud of you, Louis. I found your notes written in lemon juice. Where all eyes size you up. At one stage, I was so afraid of losing my mind that I noted everything down. Congratulations, Louis. Wait, please tell me you didn't open Pandora's box. The urn? No, I didn't. Why? Good. We'll deal with it later. I must admit, I found it difficult to understand how and why Mortimer didn't have a place in history. On the continent, Mortimer and Holm are mere dandies who organize society balls. History forgets them with a disconcerting facility. No one speaks about them, and yet they whisper in the ears of kings and presidents. I went beyond the Nightmare Mother. You understood the Masonic date. 1191. Of course, it was during that siege that the demon took possession of Sir Mortimer. They spent a whole night in conversation until the early hours of the morning. Mortimer had passed the test. He had charmed the demon, and so it chose him to be its host for centuries to come. But tell me, did you find his secret study? I did indeed. Did you see his maps of the world? He has contacts the world over. Yes, 
I've been developing the Golden Order across the world for many years, and I've never seen anyone with such influence. It's simply inhuman. You mean the conference? How can you explain that someone manages to bring together so many important figures without anyone knowing? And without any security or personnel. Louis, I am proud of you. You came all this way. You found me. You have surpassed me. You taught me everything I know. Right. How did it all begin? I saw him! What, what do you mean, you saw him? I was 20 years old. I was young and carefree. I traveled the world in search of adventure. In the Persian Gulf, we came across an ancient grimoire that became unlocked. Composed of seven parts, each one was a book in itself, set in a sort of metal armor that structured the whole thing. When all the volumes were brought together, they formed a single book. On my return to Paris, I set to studying these pages. I spent all my days and nights studying them. Oh, I can imagine you doing that. But the writing was in a language I had never seen before. Developed well before Sumerian, in my opinion. So I got the idea to form a small occult circle composed of all the major names in the occult world to see if anyone else could crack it. And you found no one. And I found someone, Louis. I found him. Or rather, he found me. He was young, charismatic, he was flamboyant. You mean Mortimer? He was a veritable mine of knowledge. I showed him the book, and he was able to decipher a few passages. We spent several months together studying the pages. He was already old in those days, wasn't he? So you recognized him when you arrived on the island, right? No, he wasn't in that body. But I know it was him. I swear it was him. The way he spoke, his posture, a few of his intonations, his mannerisms. Wait a minute. You were talking about 60 years ago. I I've lost the thread. Yes, sorry. He helped me understand certain passages until I realized that he only translated a few parts for me. But I had aroused his interest. It was too late. How so? I mean to say he manipulated me. He used me, and in the end, he stole the book with all its secrets. Did he ever go to your place? Not once. At least, I don't think so. But before disappearing, he proposed a pact between us. He proposed that I follow him and let him teach me, allow him to bring me up. And you refused, of course. Why naturally, Louis? You don't make deals with the devil. After that, I spent my whole life looking for him. Three years later, in Berlin, I just missed him. In London, I lost six members of the Order in a chase. In 1741, in Tunisia, I found a sect of fanatics who had crossed paths with him once. 1741, in Poland. 1749, in India. Eight years ago, in Venice. We agreed never to speak about what happened in Venice, Louis. You agreed, and that was before you spoke to me about demons. Wait, the baby we delivered, you and me, that night in Venice, did he have anything to do with Lord Mortimer? The child was his son. We stole his son? Are you insane? I always thought we took him to save him. That was the case. It was precisely to save him from his father. Need I remind you the mother died during childbirth? What became of the child? Later! For the moment, that is not the key issue here. Once we found the Alizif in Paris, I followed Von Borchert's trail here. I didn't think it would lead me straight to the demon. It was careless of me. He toyed with me for a few days, until I caught on, until I saw him as he was. But he had no intention of letting me leave. We are all his pawns, Louis, and if we don't want to spend the rest of our lives turning round in circles here, we must absolutely get off this island. All right, can we move on? Wait a minute, one last thing.
What did you negotiate about the Alazif with Volner? Absolutely nothing. I managed to pull the wool over his eyes until I found a way to flee. What was going on with the cannons in Tuscany? It was nothing. Since when does the Order finance wars? The cannons for that Bonaparte fellow? Listen, once in the lion's den, I did whatever I could to appear legitimate. So yes, I pretended to be interested in Mortimer's project about a young military man who was seeking funding for a foundry in Tuscany. Between you and me, if buying China would have enabled me to escape, I would have signed without hesitation. I want to know what happened with Elizabeth Adams. Louis, we haven't time for those details. I'm sorry, Mother, but I want to know. She was one of the receptacles for these monsters. I met her parents when she was born. One of the demons got inside her. The demon used her to spy on her father, John Adams. He is one of the founding fathers and vice president of the United States, you know. Mortimer possessed her? No, I don't think it was Mortimer. Her father, John Adams, hired me to tend to her, but the evil in her was too deep. In spite of the various treatments I tried on her, I never succeeded in getting it out of her. It's not something I'm proud of, Louis, but I had to try everything. Good. I think that's about right. We shall speak about it once we get back to France. Great actions for humanity have been decided by demons for centuries, Louis. They are playing with our destiny. We are their slaves. And it's time for it to stop. By the way, what was Mortimer's project at this conference? He demands that the Spanish hand over Louisiana to France. Oh, knowing him, it won't stop there. We should do our utmost to put a stop to Mortimer's plans. But for the time being, there are more pressing matters. Are you going to tell me why we're here? There. That's why we are here. Reassure me, we aren't going to have to force that one, are we? I don't think we're even capable of doing it. You're going to have to find a way to open it. Why, of course. And what's inside? Something to vanquish them with? Perfect. So, how does it open? We'll need several keys. I found a note from the architect who conceived the mechanism in Mortimer's secret study. We have to first gather five objects before we try anything. Are the five objects the keys? Exactly. We have the Clement III cross, the nails, the Gutenberg Bible, the exegesis of Judas, an armillary sphere, and all we need to match up the dates between the different calendars. An exegesis. Anything else? Hmm. You... Did you manage to vanquish the Medusa? To open the chimney? Yes, absolutely. So you've already come across it. It's the Bible of Judas that is exposed in the secret room, behind the chimney. Why do they call it an exegesis? Because that's what it is, and not an apocryphal Bible, strictly speaking. It's the study of a text, with a summary, not an actual Bible. Anyway, well done for the Gorgon. You did well. You didn't get tricked by the light bouncing back. Thanks. Do you think I can take it safely? We haven't got a choice, Louis. Without it, we won't be able to work out this cursed mechanism. Why a cross? Well, I haven't the foggiest idea, but it just so happens that's what you are going to use to activate the mechanism. I found the one Mortimer kept. It belonged to Cardinal Guibert, 
better known by the name of Pope Clement III. Perfect. Where is it? Unfortunately, I've lost it. When I lost my hand, I went dashing out, and it must have fallen from my pocket. Remember, Mother. I I'm certain you can remember. Let me think. You were running? I was bleeding to death. You remember the pain? I thought I was going to faint. Yes, I remember. I don't think it can be far, can it? Would you have lost it outside? No, I don't think so. It must be in the area. I don't remember going up with it. Perfect. I'll search the crypt before leaving. One last thing before you go. Be very careful. If you come across anyone, they can all potentially be spies of Mortimer or Holm. Don't ever confide in anyone because a demon can slip inside them at any moment. Wait, not all of them though. Take Washington. Especially Washington. He's been conditioned by Mortimer for years. Look at them for crying out loud. How do you explain their behavior otherwise? The most influential politicians in the Western world gather together without the least protection, without a single aid to assist them, to participate in a conference during which the guests start dropping like flies. Me, Adams, Peru, Hillsborough, Look at the number of calamities that have happened over the past few days. And not one of them has asked to leave the island? Do you find that normal? You'll see. Go up to the manor to look for the keys, and I wager not one of them will speak to you about my being in Emily's room. Do you think so? Go on, you'll see. And come back with all the objects in one go. Time is against us. And remember, the code to get out of the secret office is 6466. Let's see if I can work it out myself. It looks like a kind of control panel. You ought to go, Louis. If someone finds us here, the situation might well become seriously complicated. Famous cross of Clément the Third. Perfect. And one key found.
Let's see if the statues are in place yet. Shield toward the sword. Now well, that's good. The statue is already in the right place. The lantern is already in the right position. Turn toward the shield. The sword toward the gorgon. That's good. It's in the right place. That statue is not positioned correctly. Open sesame. Caesar's Laurel Reef. Hmm. If Mortimer really is what my mother says he is, it could mean... No, that's impossible. No, no, not Caesar. Well, looks like a pamphlet on different political regimes, written by Mortimer himself. Is the author of this work. It talks about his passion for art. So that's Pandora's box? An urn? Mother seemed worried that I was able to open it. Hmm. I wonder why. So, I did well not to touch it. So that's the exegesis of Judas. I hope Mortimer doesn't read it very often, otherwise he's going to notice that someone's stolen it. But that's just too bad. I need it. Right. I've got what I need. Now let's not waste any more time.
Ah, Louis. Glad you're here. Blasted. He's gonna talk about my mother. Come and see what I've found. There are pieces of paper in the ashes of the chimney. Someone's been burning something here. Incredible. He doesn't seem to want to speak to me about what happened between my mother and the Hillsborough sisters. Show me a little. Look, it's possible to distinguish two different writing styles. Hmm. The rest of the correspondence between my mother and Emma. Someone tried to burn an exchange of messages. I'm certain. There must be more. Shit. What on earth is he doing? If you want my opinion, a, a servant must have burnt some old papers, that's all. Why, of course. You very nearly made me think that you were trying to hide something, Louis. No, I'm sure there must be other hidden messages. He won't let go. He's going to work his way back to the Bible if he continues. Bible's still there. An armillary sphere. Perfect. That will save me some time. I only hope that he isn't going to realize it right away. This time, it'll be a lot quicker. If I remember rightly, the code was 1191.
course. Feathers, pigeons probably. Feathers, pigeons probably. There, those are the nails I was looking for. Come on, let's get out of here. 6466, six, six, if I remember correctly. Golden elixir. Golden elixir.
So, good. You've managed to gather all the keys. Yes, that's right. I have everything. What should I start with? Place the Clement III cross on the console. Then you have to put the nails on the disc of the door. What theme did you start with? As the fresco shows the birth of Christ, I placed one nail in Bethlehem, one in chapter two, and one in verse six. The iris opened a little. I thought it was normal. Behind the aperture of the iris, there is a duct in which I put my hand. I felt something like a valve at the bottom. I thought by turning it the door would open, or the iris would open completely, or something else would happen. Instead, I felt something like an axe cut off my hand. I really thought it was the end of me. What did you do then? Well, although I had made some unfortunate choices, I was lucky in that Mortimer was well stocked with drugs. I raided his supplies of medicine. All right, my turn now. Go ahead, impress me. I'll shut up and let you concentrate. Fresco clearly shows the birth of Christ. Louis, I can assure you that that is not the solution to this enigma. This fresco's only purpose is to mislead. I know that now. Please, focus on another theme about Christ. We'll have to trust her. Hmm, it looks like there are three types of inscriptions. There, there are three styles of writing and I've got three nails. There must be a link. I must surely put in one nail per category. Clearly, we have names of towns, Arabian numerals, and Roman numerals. You could see that the paint has come off in parts. Difficult to see what was there, but I can distinguish the letters N, R, I. Nothing more. Mortimer deliberately set a trap by showing the birth of Christ, then maybe the solution is the contrary. The death of Christ in that case?
Hmm, it looks like there are three types of inscriptions. This exegesis contains comments from Judas on the different Gospels. It only contains certain chapters and verses, and the chapters are indicated by Roman numerals. The lexicon refers to different chapters and verses from the exegesis of Judas. Chapter 19, verse 17. Jesus was crucified on the 8th of Nisan, 3,793, in a place near Jerusalem. The Romans put a crown of thorns on his head. Chapter 19, verse 17. Jesus was crucified on the 8th of Nisan, 3,793, in a place near Jerusalem. The Romans put a crown of thorns on his head. Chapter 19, verse 17. Jesus was crucified on the 8th of Nisan, 3,793, in a place near Jerusalem. The Romans put a crown of thorns on his head. works. Well done, Louis. I hadn't seen those other wheels. Try connecting the theme to see if it goes all the way. There must surely be a connection between the wheels. There are different icons on this wheel, but it looks like some of them can't be connected to the other wheels. Now, given the difference between the number of icons and the number of towns, I think that only one path connects all the wheels with one another. Let's try to connect the theme I've chosen with the rest. This wheel contains several symbols made up of one or two figures and one letter. The highest figure does not exceed 31, and each letter corresponds to a month of the year. A for April, and M for March. I think these symbols must represent a specific date. This wheel represents the different moons. 
In the occult sciences, we represent the full moon by an X. As for the dark moon, called the new moon, in cults, it's, well, it's often associated with something harmful. Look at this. There are notches between each of the wheels. So, I have to link the name of the town from the theme I've chosen to an icon, then to a date, and finally, the date to the moon. The moon shadow moves from west to east. During new moon, the moon is entirely in the shadow. Then, the shadow moves from west to east, meaning left to right, and goes through the following states. Waxing crescents, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full moon, waning gibbous, last quarter, waning crescent, and the cycle starts over with the full shadowed new moon. During new moon, the moon is entirely in the shadow. Then, the shadow moves from west to east, meaning left to right, and goes through the following states. Waxing crescents, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full moon, waning gibbous, last quarter, waning crescent, and the cycle starts over with the full shadowed new moon. Eighth of Ramadan, 553, Waxing Crescent. Chapter 19, verse 17. Jesus was crucified 
on the 8th of Nisan, 3793, in a place near Jerusalem. The Romans put a crown of thorns on his head. Chapter 19, verse 17. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him on either side, and Jesus in the midst. Chapter 19, verse 17. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him on either side, and Jesus in the midst. Seventh of Shaban, six oh seven, first quarter.
I can feel the lever at the bottom. Good luck. I never doubted you, my son. <laughs> 